Good morning. I'm Kim Hobbs coming to you this 15th Sunday after Pentecost for the Sunday of September 13th, 2020 for our filming here at St. Benjamin's Lutheran Church for our Sunday service. Um, I'm sure you weren't expecting to see me, but you'll be seeing Pastor David in just a few minutes for our gospel and our sermon lessons of the day. Um, we hope everybody is doing well and that school has gotten off to a great start for all of you with children. And we're going to go ahead with our Sunday worship. We'll start this Sunday with the prelude.
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins together. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We forgive that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gathering in this morning is in 834, Immortal and Mystical. Am I in the place of God? 
Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life. And to be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 103, verses 1 through 13. We will read the verses responsibly. I'll start with the odd verses, and you can respond along with the evens. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your sins, and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. This Christian community has significant struggles with diversity. Here, Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ who died for all of us and will judge each of us. Welcome those who are weak in the faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? For you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel reading for this Pentecost 15 Sunday comes from Matthew chapter 18. Glory to you, O Lord. When Peter asks about the limits of forgiveness, Jesus responds with a parable, one that suggests human forgiveness should mirror the unlimited mercy of God. And so from Matthew. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if any other member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of the other fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you have not had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, the Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So, my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For our children's sermon, I hope my dear friends will gather around and uh, have a little bit of time with me. Well, here we are, week number one of the school year 20, 20, 20, 21. One week in, actually four days, that Labor Day sure does help. Um, but I'm wondering how we all are doing. It's probably been an interesting week. I'm sure it has. I know there probably have been internet problems, sleepy morning problems, alarms that maybe went off later than they should have, um, maybe problems at breakfast before school starts. But maybe on the other hand, everything's going really well this past week, and it's four wonderful days of a new school year in a virtual setting. And you're saying, hmm, we can deal with this. Well, regardless, it's a different beginning of the school year. It sort of ended differently last year, sort of began differently this year. I guess I wanted to just kind of get a barometer check, kind of seeing how you all are doing with that. And hopefully things have gone well for you. And want you to realize again and again how much God cares for you, loves you, takes care of you, and this virtual school setting. Um, God's blessing your classroom and your classmates and your teachers with all kinds of wonderful gifts and things to share. And I'm just confident <clears throat> that things are going to continue to go well. And I want you to know that even when you have troubles with the laptop, even when you have troubles with spilling your breakfast on your pants, um, even when you get a little hot-headed with your parents or brothers or sisters, rest assured, God still loves and cares for you in all of that. So, I have a good week number two of school. My wishes for you are for a really great week, a full week, a five-day week. And I'm sure it's all these different days, A, B, and whatever, but I'm sure it's going to be good. Blessings on your week. Thanks. So, it was an astonishing thing to see. 
A young man named Brandt sat in the witness stand of a courtroom in Dallas, Texas, speaking to the white woman who was on trial, and she was named Amber Geyer, an ex-police officer who had just been convicted of murdering Brandt's beloved older brother, Botham Jane, in his own apartment. She had entered Botham's apartment by mistake, thinking it was hers, mistook her, excuse me, mistook him for an intruder, and shot him in the chest. Some of us no doubt remember this crime and it being in the news. At this ex-police officer's trial a year later, Botham's heartbroken younger brother, Brant, took the stand and told Amber that he forgave her, that he wanted only the best for her, and that he wanted to give her to give her life to Christ, something that he said his brother would have wanted as well. And then after asking permission from the judge, and to the astonishment of all present, Brandt walked across the courtroom and embraced the woman who killed his brother. She clung to him. She was sobbing. It was an incredibly moving and courageous example of forgiveness. Now, if you remember, that only happened last October. Since then, of course, our world has been turned upside down. There have been many more killings of unarmed black men and women, killings that have ignited many demonstrations and a long overdue reckoning on race in the United States. Brandt's very act of forgiveness last October and his embrace of Amber elicited praise from most people, but also some criticism and a discussion took place of forgiveness in a country plagued by racism. Brandt himself took on that issue when he spoke this last December to law enforcement officials who gave him an award for ethical leadership. And he said, I want you all to know that I'm not a threat, that young black males are not inherently dangerous or criminal. I implore you to champion policies and procedures that amplify the value of all lives. These are truly wise words from a remarkable young man. But if his act, it is his act of forgiveness that strikes me and others more this week because forgiveness is the subject of our lectionary readings. You'll recall we had the reading about Joseph and Joseph's brothers beg him for forgiveness after their father Jacob dies, afraid that he'll take revenge against them for their sin of selling him into slavery so many years before. And then there's Peter. Peter asking Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus expands his vision to see how miserly is Peter's concept of forgiveness. And our psalm for today, the psalmist extolling the God of Israel who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. Forgiveness is really, really hard. We who have suffered far less than that Botham Jane, Jean's family know that it's much easier to be angry. It's much easier to nurture, nurse a grudge. There's something satisfying about reciting to yourself or to others the grievances, big and small, that justify your righteous anger. And there is always fuel for that fire of anger and bitterness. The politics of the workplace, even churches, and the nature of human community lead to injustices and offenses, sometimes intentional, sometimes not. Intentional or not, we hurt other people, and we ourselves get hurt. It would be great if it was just me and Jesus, but I have to deal with you, and you have to deal with me, and again, it's difficult to forgive. But that is exactly what Jesus calls us to in today's gospel reading. We're to forgive those who sin against us. We're to forgive as God has forgiven us. Our lives are to reflect the nature of the God we worship, a God who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Now, there are some important caveats to make. First, Forgiveness is not license 
for continued injustice, abuse, or oppression. An unrepentant sinner or an unjust system cannot be allowed to continue to harm others. That's what Brandt, the brother, was saying in his remarks to the police officials. There's need for repentance and reform in many societal systems and in our own lives. Also, forgiveness does not erase consequences. Amber, the ex-police officer, is serving time in prison for the murder of Bapham Jean. And that is as it should be. Forgiveness may heal a relationship, but it does not erase the consequences of sin. Nevertheless, forgiveness is at the core of our call to Christian discipleship. It is at the core of the Christian gospel itself. The gospel is not simply God loves everyone. The gospel is if anyone is in Christ. There is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. And... In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. The gospel is, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. So, my friends, as witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ, we proclaim not just that God loves, but that in Christ God forgives, and God reconciles, and God makes new. And we live that out in our lives by forgiving those who have sinned against us. There are two more stories to share. One is the events of the Charleston Nine, that church shooting five years ago in which the young man came into the church Bible study at Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina, and he gunned down the pastor and the attendees at the Bible study. It was the sister of one of the victims who in court declared her forgiveness of the young shooter and told the man that God prompted her to act to forgive him. The other story is from Corey Tenboom, you remember back in the early 1900s, she was a Dutch Christian woman who was imprisoned in the Ravensbrück concentration camp for hiding Jews in her home. She lost her beloved sister to the camp, but after the war, she traveled around Europe preaching the Christian gospel of forgiveness and reconciliation. Corey writes of an encounter with a former guard from Ravensbrück, from whom she recognized at a talk she gave at a German church in 1947. This guard came up to her afterwards. He told her that he had become a Christian, that he knew God had forgiven him, but he wanted to ask for her forgiveness. He held out his hands, but she felt at that time nothing but anger for him. Corey wrote, And still I stood there with the coldness clutching my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. And I prayed silently, Jesus, help me. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so, woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, something incredible took place. The current started in my shoulder and down my arm, sprang into our joined hands. And then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. And I cried, I forgive you, brother, with all my heart. For a long moment, Corey and that guard had grasped each other's hands, the former guard and the former prisoner. And she said, I had never known God's love so intensely as I did at that moment. As I said before, forgiveness is hard. It's really hard. But the good news is that where God calls, God also equips. God gives us in Christ the gift of forgiveness and helps us to share that gift with others. 
And in so doing, God opens doors that are shut. God opens a future that is shut. By forgiving those who have sinned against us, we do not allow the past to dictate our future. Forgiveness breaks the chains of anger and bitterness and frees us to live new lives. Countless saints down through the ages, like Brandt, like Corey, and like the others, teach us by their example what it means to follow a Savior, our Jesus, who forgave his executioners from his cross. May God bless us as we follow his gospel of forgiveness and reconciliation in these troubled days. God bless us. Amen. The hymn of the day today is hymn 482, I Come With Joy. <laughs> Make your ways known to the nations. 
speak kindness to our bitter grudges, settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence, bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have shown us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you, and the tongues that taught us to praise you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray together the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and lead us into the way of truth and life. And our sending hymn is ELW number 544. 